Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is a wonderful day to be alive. Good morning. I am Prophetess Deborah Smith Adams, and I welcome you to this morning's Bible study. It is Tuesday, January the 14th. Lord have mercy, Jesus. The month is already into double digits. And we are halfway into the month of January. This just lets us know time waits for no one. So I want to thank each and every one of you for coming on this morning. And thank you for what the Lord is doing and what he is going to do in not just my life, but also in your life as well. And uh, we are still on the fruit of the Spirit we have been on the fruit of the Spirit now for almost a year. We started on the fruit of the Spirit absolutely on the 29th of January, 2019. And we started with the fruit of love. Love covers a multitude of sins. And if we don't have love, we don't have God. Because God is love. Because John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but would have everlasting life so guess what that means that love trumps hate it trumps evil it trumps slander it trumps everything and God wants us to have love one for another for our brother our sisters he said to even pray for those who spitefully misuse you so that means guess what if I'm not in love I cannot pray for you because a lot of times people I ain't praying for you I ain't gonna pray for her because the love of God is not in you that will permit you to pray for somebody and God wants us to be willing workers he wants us to pray for those and because they spitefully misuse you, he knew they were going to misuse you. He knew they were going to abuse you. But he said, pray for them anyway. Because see, he wants all of us to be saved. He wants nobody to be missing, lacking, or any kind whatsoever. So therefore, they have become prey for the enemy. But God wants us to pray for them that they don't stay in that state of mind. Because see, this is just not a one-sided or lopsided gospel. This here is the gospel for all. He said that we would take the gospel all over the world to the uttermost parts of the earth. So therefore, that means if it's uttermost parts of the earth we don't know where the uttermost parts of the earth is so that means he wants everybody to hear his word and to know the truth and to know that the truth will make a man or woman free and whom the son is set free is free indeed so with these bible studies these lessons and everything that the lord is bringing us is to give us Freedom is to give us peace because so many people are so bound today that they don't have the freedom and they don't have the peace of God which surpasses all understanding and they're going into bouts of depression and going into suicidal thoughts and a lot of them are even taking that temptation. They're going and they're attempting, they're doing the suicide, but God would not want us to take our lives. He would not want us to stay into depression and he would not want us to go into jealousy and rage and anger because see all those are bouts of the devil and so he doesn't want us to go there he wants us to live a life of freedom so praise God that was a nugget for somebody today for somebody who will come back for somebody who will even come today and listen but uh before we get started is I just want to give a couple of announcements and one of the biggest announcements that we have that this year we are having our inaugural conference we're having the first conference the Holy Spirit said to have a conference not just any kind of conference we are having a family conference the family is not what it used to be people in right there in the same house they no longer familiar with anyone God said have a family conference so set your clock set your dates May 15th through the 17th 2020 we are having a family conference in Hilton Head South Carolina Hilton Head South Carolina we will be there so therefore we are um 
accepting deposits now yes well i haven't seen anything you all i have a fly to say set the date i remember back in the day when the hyundai first came out the hyundai was a little rubber bumper car people had never seen before but people were putting down a $50 deposit on a car they never seen but they say okay $50 deposit i'm in well guess what today it still stains a $50 deposit you can be in $50 non-refundable deposit for a room in Myrtle, I'm sorry, in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. I'm so familiar with Myrtle Beach, but I've never been to Hilton Head like that before. The Hilton Head, South Carolina. That's where the Holy Spirit said to have this family conference, May 15th through the 17th in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. And if you want to send a $50 non-refundable to cover your thing, you can go to cash at dollar sign B-A, the number two RM that would put your uh, room down. We have a uh, one bedroom villa, we have two bedroom villas. So if you have a one bedroom villa, a one bedroom villa holds a maximum of four people. So four people are coming for a one bedroom villa, it's $225. That is not expensive, it's $225 for four people to occupy a one bedroom villa. We're not trying to bankrupt nobody, God just wants the family to, to come together. And that $225 is gonna cover a t-shirt, it's gonna cover uh, two breakfasts, it's gonna cover a light meat, a greet when you come that uh, Friday evening and it's going to cover the conference. So we're not breaking anybody. We're not trying to bankrupt anybody. We're going to have games. We're going to have prizes. We have the ocean. We're going to have bike rentals. We're just going to get together as the family and we're going to communicate and see the family should be familiar people and see we're not familiar anymore, which is nowadays when the family get together, they come together at the table and this is what they do. This is their communication. They're sitting there, they're punching, they're seeing what's on social media. They're seeing, oh, well, how many likes do I have? Do anybody like me? And a lot of them are living falsified lives behind these instruments. So therefore, guess what? I don't want to live a falsified life. I want to be able to live my life publicly as well as probably the same in Christ Jesus. Amen. Because see, if I'm living one way in the house, then I get out the house and I got to live another way. Guess what? I'm going to lie to somewhere along the line. We're going to slip up. And it's like, well, I thought you, well, guess what? If I'm the same way all the time in Christ, I'm living, I'm breathing, I'm having my being. I don't have to worry about slipping up. You don't have to worry about slipping up. We want to be all that God have us to be. Amen. So therefore, we got to get tuned into the family. So pack up your cars, take the airplane, the bus, the train, however high you need to get there. Hilton Head, South Carolina, there is a flyer. It's called Gutsy. Gutsy is what the Lord gave me. Gutsy is the name of this conference. And it's like, Gutsy, yes. God understands that trial strengthens you. And so therefore, we go through these trials of afflictions and we don't always understand it. Sometimes we're always so busy, ready to blame the devil on everything that we go through. The devil is not in everything because some things is just our own pure flesh, our own pure disobedience that we get ourselves in the these predicaments but God wants us to be able to rest assured and to know he is always there he wants us to rest assured to know that he wants to restore the family he wants to bring the family back because the family has been broken the family has been lost and I'm just going to read it to you which is I'm going to go right quick out of the new living translation I know that everything God has given me I'm not going to finish it no and I'm not even going to try and act like I'm going to finish it because See, the thing about it is God has put too much in me this morning to even to give out. So right now, this is what he says. This is where he has brought us from. And I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. I'm in Isaiah 58 and verses 12. And it's talking about a true and false worship. God said he's coming back for the true worship for those who will worship me in spirit and in truth. And 58 and 12 says, some of you will rebuild the deserted ruins of your cities. Then you will be known as a rebuilder of walls and a restorer of homes. That's what God wants to do. He wants to restore and people think they can live this life 
life of Christ without having the saving grace and the saving faith of who God is. We can't do it. We become fraudulent. We try to do this in our own work and I can't do this in my own self. You can't do this in your own self. We got to get into God. We got to allow him to be the, uh, the author and the finisher of our faith. We got to get him to get to know him. We got to know to hate what God hates and to love what God hates. And he loves his people. And we got to learn how to reach out. And when we don't reach out, guess what? God can't do anything with us and he cannot do anything for us. So we got to get to the point of reach out and touch someone. Reach out and touch your life. Reach out and help a life. Reach out and snatch someone out of the pit of hell. Because if we don't reach out and snatch them out of the pit of hell, you better bet it. The devil is going to keep them there and he is going to take them out. And do we want the devil to take our people out? No, we don't. We don't want the devil to take our people out. We want the devil to flee from us because the word of God said, resist the devil and he will flee. So if we resist him and not play with him, he got to go. So I'm going to resist the devil and he's going to have to leave from me. He's going to have to leave from my family because see, I'm going to be like Joshua. As for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. I'm just not talking about my physical house. If you have ever come in contact with me, if you have ever been an associate, ever come around me at any given time, far as I'm concerned, you have just made yourself my family. You didn't stay. That's okay. You still made yourself my family. You still made one that I've come in contact with that I would agree with God that you will and you shall be saved. You and your whole household, that's the way I pray and that's the agreement that I have that God God will save your whole house or there'll be a household salvation in the name of Jesus. So that's why the Lord said we are repairers. We are rebuilding. We got to build the bridge. We got to repair the gap of what the devil have came in. God, he has stolen from us. He has stolen your sons. He has stolen your daughters. He has stolen some of y'all's husbands and your wives. And some of your daughters have been molested. Some of your sons have been molested. Then all of a sudden they think that there's something wrong with them. Well, I was supposed to be going gay and I supposed to be this and I supposed to be that. Yeah, it's a touchy subject, but guess what? God has made me bold enough that I can talk about it, okay? And I'm not going to turn my back on it because if he say to say it, I'm going to say it. And so therefore that's not the way you were born. That is not the way he told you to be. But the thing about it is we have allowed people to get that vulnerable side of us to make you think that this is who you are. But see, if we become naked and ashamed in front of the eyes of God, we would know what the word of God says. And some people think that Sodom and Gomorrah was just the Old Testament. But no, we also hear when we go to the book of Ephesians, we go to the book of Acts, we go to the book of 1 Corinthians, it talks about the homosexuality. It talks about those things that's not pleasing in the sight of God. And sometimes and oftentimes people take and they throw them away. No, you're not to throw your your sons and your daughters away, no matter what state they're in, whether they're homosexual, transsexual, transgender, you are to keep them. You are to love them. You're not to give up on your children, no. Because see, we can pray them from what they are to what they should be, which is the righteousness of God, a son and a daughter of the Most High, and God can use them. But if we're going to label them and throw them into the garbage can, see, I used to watch, um, Empire. I don't watch them anymore because it got too vulgar, too graphic. But I, when it started out, I watched Empire. So here it is at a little a uh, little boy, the father saw that his son was not like the rest of them. So what he did, he picked him up. And he threw him in the trash can because he thought he was garbage. And that's what people are doing to one another. They're throwing us away. They're throwing us into the trash can because they don't see our self-worth. And when they don't see our self-worth, we don't see our self-worth. And we don't know what kind of man we are. But God never put us as garbage. No. We have to be able to love all of who we are. Love all of who your sons and your daughters are. Don't put a label on them. God never told us to put a label on anyone. Praise God. Anyway, praise God. I'm going to pray now, and we're going to get into the lesson. <laughs> Holy Spirit, we welcome you. My God, Holy Spirit, I thank you.
For you got me this morning fired up, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, God, that the gates of hell, it will not, and it shall not prevail upon us, and it will not prevail upon your sons and your daughters that's looking at this right now live, or who are going to come back and look at it later, Lord God, or even who are going to go back and share it with somebody. Father, I just want to say thank you, Lord God, because it's in you that we live and we have our being, oh God. Father, just have your good and your perfect way, oh God, that we make impact, oh God, that we thank you, Lord God, for being the same way yesterday, today, and forevermore, and through it all, Lord God, I thank you. You have not given up on us in the name of Jesus, and I can just lift my hands and say, glory to God, you did not give up on me, because when I was lost in my sins and could not find my way through it all, you stayed with me. You picked me up out of the muck and the miry clay, Lord God, so I thank you that you are no respect the person and what you did for me that you would do for others as well, Lord God, and we just thank you, Lord God, that the bad over us is love that we will love 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 like we ain't never loved before lord god because lord god we thank you because your love it covers us it protects us it keeps us in the name of jesus so we just thank you this morning for your love in the precious name of jesus and the love that you've given to us we're going to give it out in the abundance to the full till it overflows in the name of jesus and we just want to say thank you lord god as we agree because there's power in agreement oh god because you said of two or three touch and agree, you are in the midst. So I thank you right now for the power of agreement in the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Like I said earlier, we are still on the fruit of the spirit. It's not fruits. It is fruit. It's nine fruits collectively, but it's one fruit because it's that characteristic in the nature of God that we have been going for. And the fruit is that visible expression of power working inwardly and invisibly. It's the character of the fruit being evidence of the character of the power that's providing it. It's an invisible. It's on the inside of you. It is who God have intended you to be. And because it's down on the inside of you, what's in you, it's going to come up. If love is in you, it's going to come up. If anger and malice and strife and jealousy is in you, trust me, it's going to come up. But we're talking about the fruit and the goodness of the Lord. That thing is coming up and we're getting that character. We're getting that nature. We are growing and we're going to look just like Jesus because we know that as Jesus is so are we in this world we are imitators of our heavenly father we're imitators and I thank God that we are imitators of him I thank God how he is using us in the earth to go forth and do a work in him it's all about the kingdom business y'all it's not about me we're talking kingdom business we're talking about it's time to grow up it's time to get off the bottle it's time to get off the breast milk and it's time to start chewing the real meat it's time to start getting your teeth together it's time to get that jaw bone together and just keep chewing keep chewing keep chewing keep chewing it that's what we gotta do keep chewing and as we keep chewing and we keep chewing whatever food is in our mouth it becomes to become liquefied because then it becomes liquefied and it's just like, wow, that was so good. And that's what we got to do with the word of God. We got to keep eating that word, keep digging into the word. And it's like, whoa, that was so good. Because as I got to going over this assignment, it's like, well, gee, I done read the Bible a few good times. But all of a sudden, it's like, whoa, this is so good. And I am so grateful that I can keep reading it. He said that in the last days, he's going to give us more revelation. He's going to give us more mysteries and everything of his word. And I tell you. I get excited about Jesus. My goodness, I do. And the day I came out of the uh, contemporary English version, I like to use a lot of different versions because, see, what may work for one may not work for all. So I'm not going to put every, all my eggs in one basket and just let you, you know, just stay straight up in King James or New Living or whatever. I like to mix it up so we can always get a new and a different understanding and a brighter point of view. Praise God. And here it is, Galatians out of the contemporary English version 5. 22 through 23 it says that god's spirit makes us loving it makes god's spirit not my spirit god's spirit makes us loving 
peaceful, patient, kind, good, faithful, gentle, and self-control. And because we, see, this is a nugget now. Verse 24 is a nugget. And because we belong to Christ Jesus, we have killed our selfish feelings and desires. Because we have belonged to him, we got to kill this flesh daily. We got to go to the word of God. It says to crucify this flesh daily in the name of Jesus. When we crucify this flesh, it's not I that live, it's the Christ that lives within me. And that's when the the fruit of the spirit gets within you and it gets in me and it gets to have its good and its perfect work. So we ought to be resembling our heavenly father by now because like I said, we've been on the fruit of the spirit since the 29th of July. I'm sorry, the 29th of January 2019 is when we got started on the fruit of the spirit. So therefore we ought to be mature. We ought to be showing some kind of character and the nature of almighty God, which is leading others to the cross because we have been walking this walk for a while. We should be imitators. We should be resembling him. We should be doing the word and doing the work. Not just a hearer, but also a doer of what we hear. Because if I'm only hearing and not doing anything with it, that means I'm still held accountable. But all my living is going to be in vain. And I don't want my living and y'all don't want your living to be in vain. So I want us to be able to do what we are hearing. To look like Christ, to be in self-control, to tell this body when you know that you was always ready to shoot off at the mouth and you always going to give somebody a piece of my mind and it's like you don't know. No, we keep our mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Keep it to yourself. Everything that comes to our mind don't have to come up out of our mouth. And I'm going to say that again. Everything in our mind don't have to come out of our mouth. So sometimes we just need to zip it. Take the spirit of shut up. Because when we take the spirit of shut up, guess what? We have to let the Lord do the work. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. We don't have to pay nobody evil for evil. No, I don't have to go where you're trying to take me. I use the word where you're trying to take me. Right? Because I'm exercising self-control? No, because the second you take me there, guess what? I thought you was. And that's what people do. They want to get you out of character. And the second they get out of character, they're going to throw it up in your face real quick. I thought you was. And that's what the devil always do. If he did it to Jesus, what makes you think he's not going to do it to you? He went and he told Jesus, well, if you are the son of God, then you need to jump up off this cliff and I'm going to give you all the kingdoms of this world if you bow down and worship me. And see, therefore, if I'm an imitator of Christ, if they did that to Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God, what makes you think they're not going to do it to you? But see, he took an exercise self-control. He knew who the devil was. Did he go play games with him? No, we cannot go dancing and playing games with the devil then expect to un uh, figure out, well, why I got a cold? Because you out there playing in the rain with him with no coat on. If I don't have my sword together, I don't have the whole armor of God dressed and ready for battle. And I'm just like, oh, whatever. Guess what? If I take and just do whatever, I'm going to get whatever comes my way because I've left the door wide open. And I know yesterday, you know, I was on a prayer squad, which is a... Um, which is an intercessory prayer group. And here it is, one of my friends, prophetess Iris Dunman. She said, you know, God has put some of y'all in the hallway. And I'm going to tell you something. God had me in the hallway. But then all of a sudden, my God, he opened the door. And when he opened the door, I went running through the door because my body was under attack. My mind was under attack. And the devil comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But God said, I come that you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. I don't know about you, but I want the abundance of his grace and the abundance of his life. So that's what I'm pressing towards the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm moving forward no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like I'm moving forward there's some days when it's like I just don't want to do it I just don't want to do it but I gotta keep moving forward and I gotta keep doing it I'm gonna be honest this morning 
I was like, God, I just don't want to do it. I'm tired. And that's what the devil does. He likes tired people because if he can get you to keep your mouth shut, if he can get you so tired that you don't know what he's doing, guess what? Because he's so strategic, he will eat you up alive and you don't even understand how you've gotten there. I will not be beat down any longer by the tricks of the enemy. He's a strategist, but guess what? Although he is my adversary, I got an advocate in Jesus Christ. He warns us. He told me, daughter, get up and do what I have ordained you to do. Go forth. I will strengthen you. He says that when we are weak, we are strong in him. And Lord knows I was so weak. I mean, I was so tired. If I could have just got curled back up in my bed and I mean, my body, everything in me was saying, I don't want to do this today. I don't want to do this today. I need a break. I need a vacation. And that's where my body and my mind kept telling me. But I thank God right now, I did not feed into it. I didn't feed into it because I could have easily put cancel. I'm not going to do it. But guess what? God has given me the strength. He has given me the ability. He has given me the joy. He has given me the power to do this this morning. And because I'm doing it, he's given me that resurrection power, his saving grace. My God, I feel good this morning. And I tell you, I didn't always feel that way because I got up. I tell you, you know, I wasn't feeling that great job. My head was kind of going and my body wanted to go another way. And I had to pull all that stuff together. I had to understand that I am more than a conqueror and he who loves me. And he loved me so much that I was like, okay, daddy, I'm here. Bam! He put it all together because I didn't have an opportunity to put nothing together. It's all of him and none of me. And that's what we got to do when we crucify this flesh. We got to let the Holy Spirit do the work because if we try to do the work on our own, we won't get it done. We won't get it done. And I thank God that I want him to do the work. Praise God. And you know, this ain't nowhere in the notes, but I got to go there. It says in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, I'm going to start at verse 35. So do not throw away this confidence and trust in the Lord. I'm going to make this personal. Do not throw away this confidence and this trust in the Lord, Deborah. Remember the great reward that it brings you. Verse 36, his patience Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. So that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he promised. For verse 37, for in just a little while, the coming one will come and will not delay. And verse 38 is the clincher. And my righteous ones who live by faith, but... I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. For in a little while, the coming one will come and not delay. Praise God. And my righteous ones will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. If you turn away from God, there is no pleasure in you whatsoever. So therefore, I stuck with the word of God. I did the word. This is the New Living Translation that I read from right now. But I did the word because I was to the point was I said, no, I'm not going to do it. God said, yes. And he said he would take no pleasure in me if I turned away. I want God to be able to have his pleasure. I want God to be able to say, well done. I want God to be able to love everything that I'm doing because I'm working for the kingdom and not working for myself. And we got to understand when you're working for the kingdom of God, there is great reward. There is great recompense and God has need of each and every one of us. But if I say, well, you know what, God, I ain't going to do this thing because it's just too hard. Guess what? That means it's just too hard. That means I haven't tapped into his power. I haven't tapped into his saving grace. You haven't tapped into the power and the ability that God has given to you. He never told you to do it on your own. He said when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will have power. So the Holy Spirit came this morning, y'all. He gave me the power. He gave me the grace. He gave me the doors because I just got saying, no, I'm tired. I can't do it. I need a break. I need a break. I need a break. But guess what? I thank God that I didn't take the break because I got once again the opportunity to see his saving grace. His unmerited favor. I didn't do anything to earn it, nothing to deserve it. 
but he dropped it in on me. He dropped it in on me. Praise God. And I'm so excited that he dropped it in on me. Just like he dropped it in on me. Praise God. He can drop it in you. All you got to do is make yourself available. And I made myself available even when my flesh was screaming like, no. But I made myself available. And it's like, go Jesus, go Jesus, do your thing. So I praise God that I just allowed the Holy Spirit to do his thing. I ain't got nowhere where God told me to go this morning. But guess what? I am so happy in Jesus. Amen. I am, I am, I am. Yes, indeed I am. In Ephesians 4 and 11 in the uh, contemporary English version, it says, now these are the gifts that Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip. My God, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church. The body of Christ. Verse 13. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son, that we will be mature in the Lord. Told you it had nothing to do with me. I told you in the beginning, for those who started with the beginning, God said we're builders. He said in uh, Isaiah 58 and 12, we're rebuilding, we're restoring. But guess what? If I don't allow them to do the work, there is no building going on. I always pray and ask God every year for a word. I don't need a whole lot of word. No, I need a word. And the word that he gave me was builder. And God is building not just in me, but he's having me to build out there. Because, see, the ministry, Born Again to Rise Ministries, it doesn't have the brick and mortar like church does. This here is that ministry without walls. If God said, take it to the streets, we're there. He said, take it, just like we're going to Hilton here, South Carolina, for the family gutsy conference. We're there. Wherever he say to go, we're there. We're on it. Jesus, are we worried? Are we concerned about how we're going to get there? No. He said, because the Son of Man had no place to lay his head. We got the truth. We got the Follow him. We can't trip about what we have or what we don't have. He said when we lay our purse down, guess what? He's going to eventually make the provisions. If God told you to do it, he's going to make the provisions. Because if I could do it on my own, guess what? That would not be the Holy Spirit. That would be me doing it. Because, oh, that's right. I got the job for the, because I got the job, I got the paycheck. I don't have a job, y'all. So guess what? This thing is bigger than I am. So at the end of the day. God is going to get the glory because it's not about me. And he has took no job. I ain't got no job. Praise God. The only job I got is right now doing what I'm doing, sitting there getting out the word. And I tell you, I am happier doing this job than I was when I was doing the other job in the secular field. And I'm telling you, I'm loving it. I'm loving being used by God because I think about all the days when people have used me. I'm saying people. I ain't just saying a man. I'm saying people. People will use you. And the thing about it is if you're not wise, they will use you till you wonder like, my gosh, how did I get here? But I thank God that I am here. Fired up. Fired up for Christ. A vessel that he can use. And that's what we want to be. I want to be a vessel that you can use. Lord, have your way. My God, my God, my God. I am so excited about what God is doing. And so here it is. God said that we need to be mature. And when we get to thinking about the word knowledge, first of all, and we, you know, he told us to get in the knowledge. And knowledge means that we must comprehend and understand the concept and the realization of who God is and how we should be in him. People go to church all day long, but we got to understand, God, what do you expect from me? I was 12 years old when I first heard the voice of God. Did I understand? I did not. Could I go and tell anybody? I really couldn't. Why couldn't I tell anybody? Because my family thought I was crazy anyway. They thought I was crazy. So therefore, if the people thought I was crazy and I went and told them that I heard the voice of God, guess what? They probably would have put me in a straight jacket and could have wanted to have put me away. I don't know. But because I knew it wasn't my own voice, I hid it in my heart. And God said, here's word that you hide in your heart that you don't sin against him. I went out there and I was a chief sinner. I was just like Paul. I ain't killed nobody, but I tell you, I took it. I was a chief sinner. But when all of a sudden I came to the Lord, I, my, my God... 
I have been listening to Pastor Mike Toddy talk about crazy faith. God gave me crazy faith before I even heard this young man talk about crazy faith. God gave me faith and I'm looking like, oh my. And God kept giving me and you know, he just kept giving me and kept giving me and I kept doing it and I kept doing it. I kept seeing how he was working this thing out. And every time I just kept backing up from the vehicle and just allowing the Holy Spirit to do it. Just like surrendering all of who I am, the things that he just began to accomplish through me was just mind-blowing. And he's still blowing my mind years later. I've been walking with God for 31 years. I'm telling you, people have left. People have cussed me. People have said all manner of things about me. But guess what? That's not who I am. So it doesn't matter what they say or how they say it. They say it about Jesus. Happy is the man who trusts in the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. We got to get happy about this thing. We got to get to the point where we get a root system. We got to begin to dig deep. And when we dig deep into the things of God and allow the Holy Spirit to have its way, we're going to be that tree that's going to be so planted. There's a tree in my yard down in Virginia. I don't really like it, but it's still my tree. That tree got roots that's so deep. The roots go all the way from the front of the house. It goes to the back of the house. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And every time I talk to somebody about cutting that thing down, it's like big bucks. And I was like, okay. I had a little branches here and there cut off. And it's like, okay, we're just going to cut off a little portion. And that portion, like $500. But I'm like, okay, but what about the big old root? Oh, well, we're talking about $2,000. you got to be kidding me. So it's like, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you would keep this thing from hitting this house. It's a big old tree. And it's them big old massive roots that would tear up some stuff. But that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to have some massive roots that would annihilate some stuff. We got to know how to annihilate the works of the devil. That's why we got to get that root system. That's why we got to be planted by the rivers of water. And this here is one of my favorite scriptures. I ain't never got into the word, y'all, but that's okay. Because, see, it's not my work. This is God's work. And it's God's agenda. This is just like, you know, God had gave me this word before. And when he gave me this word, it says, uh, Psalms 1, I'm going into the New Living Translation. It says, oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around the sinners or join with the mockers. Verse 2, but they delight in the law of the Lord. They are meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbanks, bearing fruit each season. When you begin planting and you plant it by the water, that root system just get down there. That anointing just gets to feeding you and all of a sudden, oh my God, my God from Zion. You just become so powerful, so strong, so astute in the things of the Lord. The Holy Spirit just begin to teach you and that thing just begin to go. It just begin to grow and things just to begin to happen that you did not even know that could even happen praise god and i am so excited for the things that the holy spirit is doing in my life jesus i'm excited but i'm like god i thank you that the gates of hell will not prevail upon me in the name of jesus and i thank god that the gifts and callings they are without repentance in the name of jesus what god has done and what god is doing guess what i don't worry about what man may try to do so it says that guess what their leaves never wither you're bearing fruit, y'all. Your leaves aren't withering. When we're bearing fruit and we're walking with the fruit of the Spirit, our leaves aren't withering. It says their leaves never wither and they prosper in all that they do. It didn't say some things that they do. It said in all that they do. So we got to understand all means all, but not the wicked. It's not so. They are like worthless chafe scattered by the wind. When that wind comes, you don't know where it's coming from, the north, south, east, and the wind. The weatherman says, oh, well, we got the northwest wind coming here, and then the wind is coming from the southwest, this, that, and the other. Guess what? We don't want to be like every winning doctor. We don't want to be where all of a sudden, well, God, I went to church, and well, God, I did this, and now God, I did this. It says, they will be condemned at the time of judgment. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. No place among the godly. 
For the Lord watches over the path of the godly. But the path of the wicked leads to destruction. My God, we got to watch where we go and watch what we're doing and watch what we say. You can't do anything. You can't do everything. You can't do it. Say everything. Like I said, zip it up. If it doesn't not glorifying God, keep it to yourself. And if it's to the point that all of a sudden you got all this head language because the devil decided to take some free rent up in your head, cast it down. Devil, let this mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus. I have been transformed by the renewing of my mind, making my request be made known unto God that I'm evicting you. I am kicking you up out of my head because, see, I don't belong to you. I belong to Christ because, see, I know that blessed is the man that walks in the counsel, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So we got to learn how to kick some stuff up out of us. We got to learn how the devil, I'm not your child. I'm not your son. I'm not your daughter. I'm not your choice. I'm not your candidate. You will not use me. You will not abuse me any longer because, see, I'm walking with Christ. And I got the power in the nature of Almighty God. Praise God. And then when we get mature, we haven't achieved the natural growth, growth and development, having the uh, characteristics to become fully to become full. That's mature. But you know, people nowadays, well, I'm such and such. You could be 90 years old, but if you ain't matured, we got so many people who are 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. They ain't mature. They still just as silly as the day they was when they was teenagers. Fickle. Don't know where they going. Don't know what they do. Ask them a question. I don't know what you think. Well, guess what? If you 50 and 60 years old, you ought to have some guidance. You ought to know something about yourself by now. You shouldn't have to keep asking me the same thing over and over again. Not unless there's something wrong and you just haven't told me about it. But other than that, we got to learn how to trust God. We got to have his nature. We got to be about the Father's business. Stop trying to be about your own business. God said if you lack wisdom, them come and ask him he gives it to you liberally he's not with hiding or withholding anything from us but we got to come to him we got to ask him and if we're not asking and we're not seeking him guess what we're out there all by ourselves and we have not matured yet but god wants us to walk in maturity so we need to walk into maturity. We need to be able to mature where we can take and put that super on top of our natural and begin to be like Peter and walk on water. We got to know how to get up out of a boat because see that boat was a safe place and a safe haven. And so we like to try to play it safe. God never told us to play it safe. He said walk by faith and not by sight. I read to you earlier the just walk by their faith. Because therefore, if I'm just going by what I see, well, I see the road and I'm going to keep my eyes open. But God said, close your eyes and trust me, but keep walking the road. But no, I'm not going to close because if I close my eyes, I may fall into a ditch. Well, guess what? We're not trusting God. Put your trust in a living God. Put your trust in God Almighty. And that's what God wants us to do. Put our trust in him. And so therefore, I place my trust in an almighty God. And I'm living for his purpose. I'm doing what he have ordained for me to do. And you're going to have to grow up. We all are going to have to grow up and do what God intends for us to do. Praise God. I never got into my word today because we were supposed to talk about Samson. But we're going to still talk about Samson because you know what? The Holy Spirit already told me to do this on Thursday nights. Praise God. So Thursday nights at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, join me. We are talking about I am the last man standing. And this word about Samson, it also ties into that because I was doing it. I was like, whoa. But see, God always has his way of doing things, his way of being right. So we got to go with his plan and his purpose and his desires for our life because see, we go. We, we're so used to taking our own lives and to our own hands. I don't need nobody. I don't want nobody. No, I tried to live like that years ago. You know, I tried. Now, here it is. I was still living in my parents' house. This was before I got married. I was living at home. And here it is. I was working. And what happened was the company that I was working for, they went bankrupt. So, okay, we was able to draw unemployment. And after the unemployment, it came to the point was, okay, it eventually cut off after X amount of time. And I'm out here looking for job after job after job diligently. So therefore, I'm diligently seeking a job, but I could not find a job. 
but I had a new car. And one thing you know, if you can't pay for that car, the snatch man is going to come get it. And I'm acting like, I don't need nobody. And I'm living in my parents' house and I wasn't even talking to my own mother. I don't need y'all. And my mother like, what's wrong with this girl? I had some issues. And I was trying to make my issues at that time their issues. So here it is. I walk all around my mother. But my mother now is my best friend. She is my shero. Hallelujah. My mom is my shero. She, when I tell her what the Lord has told me, my mother, she is like, that's my daughter. Keep believing, girl. My mother supports me. She so sees into my ministry. Praise God because she believes in what God is doing in my life. And she's like, you know, what God is doing in your life is things I wish I would have done. But because she did not do it, she believes in the God in me. And she has the God in her. So I tell you, with the God in her that sows the seed, she ain't wanting for nothing. My mama been retired that almost 40 years. And with her retirement, my mother never had to come out of retirement to go get another job. Her home is paid for. She went out and bought a, her and my dad bought a vehicle and cash and owed nobody nothing but to love them. They can go shop and they can do anything. Yeah, you know, my dad is having some struggles nowadays with our homes, but I'm telling you, God is still keeping them. She is his caretaker. Praise God with the help of, you know, my siblings and stuff like that. You know, God is amazing like that. He's such an amazing God. And we got to know that God would do that. But then going back to my plight, I thought I could live without them in their house, y'all. It's like, okay, well, I couldn't even pay them rent no more. <laughs> so, but I, I would live in their house. I had to eat their food, <laughs> live in their house. <laughs> couldn't pay them rent. <laughs> but, I, but I don't need you. Come on. Seriously? And that's how some of us are with God. I don't need you not to be getting in trouble. So all of a sudden, my dad was like, what's wrong with you? I'm going to lose my car. He said, Why? I can't pay for it. And they sent me a lot of that if I don't get back so I see that. They're going to come get my car. And he's like, how much money do you need? So I told him how much money I needed. He went and gave me what I needed. I found out I needed them after all. I could not do without them when I tried to. We try to live life without Christ. No, we need them. We need Christ. We need our family. We cannot abort our mission because of our pride. And that's what it does. Pride comes before the fall. Pride is destruction. And so many people think, I don't need you. No, every joint supply. We are many members, but we are one body. We need one another. And God never told us to be a long range of Christian. Because Jesus said, I do nothing except for what my father tells me to do. I don't go nowhere, not unless my father tells me. And that's the way, that's the way we have to be in him. We have to be able to trust God in everything that we do. Because see, it's all about the kingdom of God. It's all about the body of Christ. There are no long range of Christians. There are no long stranger Christians. And if you want to walk alone by yourself, you're heading for a fall because there's power in agreement. And God wants us to be in agreement with his word because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. So since I never got to where I wanted to go or to where the Holy Spirit wanted me to go, that's okay too. Because God is still God. And because God is still God, God still got a plan and a purpose for my life. And God is still going to carry out his work. It's still about his agenda and it's not about mine. And I thank God that his grace, his saving grace. So I thank God that here it is that through it all, it's all about the kingdom of God. It's all about him and because it's all about him i am not a factor in it i am not a factor in the equation and here it is i allow the holy spirit to do the work and that's what we have to do we have to learn how to allow the holy spirit to do the work because see i can do all things through christ which strengthens me but i can do nothing without him and that's the way our lives are we can do absolutely nothing without him but we have to learn how to trust him walk by faith and not by sight so i'm on a walk of faith and i just ask you all to join that walk of faith with me if you miss any of my um any at all of any of the um bible study lessons i could have a um youtube channel which is deborah smith adams d-e-b-o-r-a-h smith adams and it's youtube 
and you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can watch the videos if you miss them, and you can share the YouTube channels. You can share these uh, here. I, I don't know all the logistics of the technology, but I do love technology, whereas they have the watch parties and all that other kind of great stuff, you know. God wants us to get his word out. God wants us to know that there is a ram in the bush for us. God will say he will pull out his spirit in the last days upon all flesh. God is doing Doing a thing in our lives that is going to be so big that there's not going to be room enough for us to uh, withhold the blessing providing we do what the spirit of the living God tell us to do so once again I'm going to be back on Thursday because I guess I never got into today's word, but God had his own agenda. He had his own purpose and he had his own plan because I tell you, I was just so tired. It was like, I can't do this. I can't. But God said, yes, you can. And I thank God that I did not abort the mission this morning that, yes, I can, that I and you, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us because the word of God tell us at Romans 8, 37, that we are more, not just conquerors, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us and we got to know if nobody else in this world loves you God loves you because see people say they love you they'll walk out on you in a minute because the second you don't do what they want you to do or you don't do whatever they walk out on you nothing is secure anymore except for Jesus Christ that's the only thing I know that's secure and it's sacred as I would not bless and curse out of the same mouth no you cannot get bitter and sweet water out of the same brook. No. The Dead Sea, they call it the Dead Sea because all the water that flows into it, it has no way to get out. I want the Word of God to get out of me, to go forth. I want the Holy Spirit to bam, blast the devil and kick his tail. I tell you. I read a book years ago when I had a youth ministry. It was called Kick the Devil's Hiding. Let me tell you something. It was a small book, but it was a powerful book. And that was a book that I used in my youth ministry back in the day. Because, see, our young people aren't covered like years ago. You had the mothers in the church who they sat there, they prayed, and they interceded on behalf of the sons and the daughters and the bishops and everyone. We don't get that anymore in the church. We get, okay, we get the service and we be sitting there thinking, okay, I think I want chicken after I get out of church. And did I turn the toaster off before I left home? Did I flush the bath? Did I flush the toilet? Or did I leave the toilet running? Did I leave the water running? We get so bogged down with so much stuff when we go into the God's house. But we got to learn how to get rid of all the cares of the world. God said, cast, the wet, cast all your cares upon me and leave them there. We got to learn how to leave some stuff on the altar and just like, God, I'm just going to sit there. I'm going to meditate on your word day and night. I'm going to listen for you to tell me my next because I need that. I need my next finish. Just like a junkie need his next fix. We need our next from the Lord. What's my next assignment? What is the next thing you want me to do? We got to hear from the Lord. We got to see as God sees. We got to get that spirit of discernment. We got to get where we are aware. What is God doing in this season in your life? Are you aware of your surroundings? Well, praise God. Like I said, save the dates. May 15th through the 17th. Gutsy family conference. God understands that trial strengthens you. We're coming out of Isaiah 58 and 12. God is rebuilding. Bring your nieces, your nephews. We're accepting deposits at Cash App, dollar sign, B-A, the number 2, R-M. There's a $50 non-refundable deposit that we're accepting. I should have the flyer up within the next week or so. We have our uh, pastors and everything that's there, that's coming. I'm telling you. We are going to have a great time. We got the bicycles, we got the ocean, we got the food, and we got one. We got me, we got you, and we got the Holy Spirit. And we're going to have a great time on Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. I'm telling you, God is going to do something amazing. I'm telling you, and I know when God is in it, come on, y'all, it's going to be big. 
it's going to be big. And God told me that he deals with me a lot in acronyms, a better introduction to God. And I'm telling you, we all need to be reintroduced. We got to go back to the basics. We got to let the Holy Spirit have his way because the gifts and callings are without repentance and everybody's not walking in their gifts. So if we got to pull it up out of you, come on, we're going to pull, we're going to pull. We got to pray you through. We're going to do that. We got to pray your sons and your daughters through. We coming together as a body of one. We coming together in unity. We're going we gonna to reason together that Jesus is Lord. So praise God. I look forward to seeing you on the other side, Thursday, 8 o'clock, Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. We're going to have I Am, which is also the last main standing, which comes out of John 14, verse 6. And as weird as it is, the word that God gave me today, we're going to get to it, hopefully, prayerfully, on Thursday evening, because God said we can do that. So praise God. You all have a blessed, safe, and a prosperous day. Once again, I am Prophetess Deborah Smith Adams of Born Again to Rise Ministries, the ministry without walls, but the ministry that don't mind taking it to the streets, because I know that Jesus is Lord. And I tell you, he is coming back for a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Well, he can't take back the physical building. Guess what? He ain't coming for the physical building. He coming back for you. He coming back for me. We are the church. We are the temple. We are the body of Christ. We getting out the boat. Peter got out the boat. We getting out the boat. We are gonna do some great marvelous things. We talk about, what, 2020, the year of clarity? Guess what? We going to tear some stuff up because we going to see so good in the spirit. We going to see the devil before he come. He want to kill, steal, and destroy. We going to let it all tear. We going to tear it down, y'all, before it even get to us. Y'all have a blessed, safe, and prosperous day. And I'll see y'all on the other side. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. This, once again, Prophet Stepper Smith Adams appointed again to Rise Ministries. I love you all with the love of the Lord. God bless you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.